Hi. Today we've got something a little bit different to take a look at. It's a disco light that's been sent to me by B Topper. Let's have a quick look at the product on their website. And so here it is on the B Topper website. I'll put a link in the description down below. But this is the LS10 10 watt LED moving head disco light that's selling for about $130. So I've always found these units quite interesting, which is why I accepted the offer of receiving this to do a review video, because there's quite a lot of electromechanical stuff going on inside these units. So first of all, we've got a couple of stepper motors that are doing the pan and the tilt movement. And then we've got the light source itself. In this case, it's a 10 watt white LED, which is a little bit surprising. I would have thought they would have used an RGB LED, but they've got a 10 watt white LED source. And then inside the head, there are two wheels. One of them has the colour wheel so that you can pick from the uh, selected colours that's already on there. And then the other one has uh, what's called gobos, which are basically uh, the little discs that allow you to create a pattern rather than just a spot beam. So this unit has seven fixed colours on the colour wheel as well as white. And you can also select halfway between each of the colours so you get a split of colour which is quite nice if you've got some fog going, it gets quite a nice coloured effect in the air. We've also got seven patterns, so seven gobos in there, uh, which can also create some quite nice effects. And it can shake those gobos, which gives the effect of a bit of movement, again, if you've got some fog in the air. So here's a quick look at the colours. Now I think these are dichroic filters because these colours are extremely vivid. So white, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, a purple effect and turquoise and then you have the split colors so you can go through those and pick a split of each of the colors which doesn't look that good uh, just on a piece of card but it looks really nice when you've got that in the air with a bit of fog so here are the gobo effects and these are quite effective they're a little bit blurry on this piece of card because we're quite close to the light uh, but it does project very well and you do also have some shaking modes which is a, a kind of a cheap way to mimic the rotating gobos. When it's in the air and you see this little bit of shaking it looks like the gobo is rotating to provide a little bit of extra movement and interest to the beam. And a quick message from our video sponsor JLC PCB where you can get all different types of PCBs made 1, 2, 4 and 6 layer in FR4 and also aluminium PCBs and they also offer PCB assembly with even more components available now so up to 80,000 components to choose from including through-hole parts now as well. So it's not just limited to surface mount parts. You can get connectors and all that kind of stuff soldered onto your PCB using their assembly service. So don't forget to visit JLC PCB for your PCB needs. So the unit's fairly quiet. The motors are definitely really quite quiet, but there is a 40 millimeter fan on the base of the unit, which I think is cooling the power supply and the stepper motor drivers and the LED driver probably. Um, so there's a little bit of uh, fan noise from that. The LED itself is not fan cooled. There is a heat sink on the back, as you can see here, and that is running about 55 degrees C or so. So this has been at full power for about 20 minutes. That seems to have stabilized around that temperature. So about 55 degrees C, which probably means that the die is sitting somewhere around 75 degrees C, which is pretty much okay for most modern LEDs. At the front of the unit there is a focus adjustment on this lens which allows you to adjust the beam uh, depending on how far you want to throw the patterns but other than that there's not really any other setting up that you need to do on the unit itself. On the back of the unit as you can see we've got the fan cooling, we've got our IEC connector for the power and then we've got the DMX512 in and out just using the 3 pin XLR connector rather than the more traditional 5 pin type. On the front of the unit is a four digit seven segment display which you see on a lot of these Chinese lights and that allows you to change some of the settings so you can change the DMX um, address. You can also set up the beam and everything manually if you just want to have it fixed in one place and then it also has some demo modes and some sound to light modes. Then on the bottom there's just some feet and also two threaded inserts which allow you to attach some anchors if you want to hang this uh, from some trusses or something like that. So first of all, looking at the light projector unit, we've got a Cree XML LED mounted onto an aluminium heatsink and then directly bonded to that heatsink at the back there. And that is connected to this little lens, which then allows the light to project right the way through the actual projector. And then we've got a couple of step motors. So we've got one at the top here that drives the gobo wheel. 
And then we've got another one just here, which is driving the color wheel. And you can just about see the dichroic colors there. So as we scroll through the colors, we can see that spinning around and then we can see it doing the half colors. So quite precise movements there. It doesn't have any other electronics in here other than the two stepper motors. So at the start, it appears like it drives the stepper motors quite gently and just taps them against a couple of homing points until it gets to the right point. And then from then, then onwards, it's just uh, using dead reckoning basically to remember where the colors are. So counting the number of steps. And then we have the gobo wheel, as you can see, moving very precisely. And then we also have that shaking effect, which just shakes the whole disc a couple of steps each way to give that effect of movement in the air. Many of you probably won't have seen it, but about five years ago, I did do a video on a clay packy stage light, a 1.2 kilowatt light source uh, with a very similar setup. So it does follow a lot of the same strategies, so a step motor and just using something to home against rather than having to use limit switches, that kind of thing and then the light source. So very similar, just completely scaled down to make it into this kind of miniature form factor. So a little bit further into the unit and it's all starting to look quite robotic. So on the side here, we've got the stepper motor which controls the tilt movement. So what we've got here is a belt drive going from the stepper motor up to the top gear which is actually directly connected to the head. And then we've got a little hall effect sensor here which is detecting the home position. So when it starts up, it does a little homing routine and it finds where home is. And you can just about see there's a little magnet just there. When it's in its home position, that lines up and gives the signal back to the main controller. And then we've got this little PCB that the Hall Effect Sensor is mounted to. And we've got this slot here so that it can be adjusted so that it lines up perfectly with that magnet. To do the panning movement, there's still a stepper motor here with a little tooth belt going round to this part here, which rotates the entire head. But the head actually has more than 360 degrees movement. So it can't just have that little Hall effect sensor like it had up at the top. So what they've done is they've got this micro switch and that's triggered by this little thing just here. But as you can see, this is pretty much free moving at the moment compared to the entire top of the system. Uh, and this can keep on rotating round past 360 degrees and then it only triggers at that last moment there. So quite an intriguing little mechanism there to give you that greater than 360 degree movement. In the base of the unit we've got the power supply. This is a 65 watt 12 volt power supply with the fan, this little 40 millimeter fan blowing directly across it. It's a fairly generic power supply. It looks very similar to the ones that we see in all the Chinese types of equipment. 65 watts, uh, quite a bit higher than the LED itself, which is only 10 watts, but also we've got two quite large stepper motors as well as the two little ones inside the head. So that's going to be more than adequate for the rating of all of those things combined. Now, we probably do care about the isolation on this unit because our um, DMX connectors on the back here, as far as I can see, are not optically isolated in any way. So if this power supply did go faulty in a way that presented a dangerous voltage on the 12 volt side, then I guess there is the chance that the DMX connectors could become live at some higher voltage. So if you're connecting this to some expensive equipment, uh, you can get isolators. And I would suggest that that's probably used if you had a whole bunch of these along with your more expensive lights, just to protect yourself in case something goes wrong. Inside the front of the unit we've got the control board and it looks very generic, very similar to the ones that we see in all of these Chinese lights. There's a generic controller in there, I didn't recognise the brand on it. Uh, an RS485 driver, some stepper motor drivers and then at the back there you can just about see an inductor. That's for the LED driver but really not a lot to see on there so I'm not going to try and fish that PCB out. So there's a look inside one of these LED disco lights and it's really quite a nice design. It does appear to be quite well made. Um, but it's an interesting design decision to still have a white LED light source inside one of these. I would have thought with the cost of the stepper motor, the colour wheel, and also the stepper motor driver on here, it probably wouldn't be that much different from just having an RGB or an RGBW light source in the first place. And then we get full colour palette mixing, which is the one thing that's kind of missing from this, um, is the ability to mix any colour you want. You've only got those fixed gobos to choose from. 
However, I think it was quite an interesting device to have a look inside. And if you are thinking about buying one of these units, I will put the link to this particular unit in the description down below. So if you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section. Thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video and also to my Patreon supporters who are always helping to keep the channel going. So I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, thanks for watching.